everyone. Today we're going to be working on our IT band. So if we have any type of props like blocks, something elevated, a chair, table, whatever works for you, I highly recommend you make sure that is handy. So when we are ready, we're going to find any easy seat that we need. And as always, I really invite you to take that extra moment to adjust and readjust. Today might even be a day that we can scan how that easy seat feels and if it's possible for us to be even 5% more comfortable. I invite you to make that adjustment. Give yourself that permission to change the pose. Now, when we're ready, we're gonna close our eyes. We'll let our hands rest however we want them to rest today. And perhaps we first start off by reminding ourselves that we are not beholden to any pose, even something as simple as our easy seat. If it is not working for us, we readjust or we come out completely. We do things that are helpful for us. Does not necessarily mean they're easy. Does not necessarily mean we're comfortable all the time. But we know it serves us. And likewise, as we take a few moments in our easy seat to find our breath, we might even remind ourselves that it's okay if this seated meditation is hard. It's okay if it makes us uncomfortable. Just giving ourselves a moment to notice which version of our easy seat will help us out, even if it's difficult at first. So perhaps today is a day that we're counting the beats of our breath. Maybe on our inhale, we just start counting the numbers up and we notice what number we naturally get to. And then on the exhale, we count again, starting from zero or one and just ending at whatever number we organically get at. And then we repeat it. We just count on the inhale. Maybe we're hitting three, four, maybe five, maybe not. And then we come back. Noticing maybe we hit the same number. Maybe it's a slightly longer or bigger number because our exhale is a little longer. But I really want you to start tapping into that. Does it help you to count the beats of your breath? Now that does not mean is it easy for you to. It does not mean is it done with 100% comfort. It is okay if we start to notice our breath and our mind reacts. If we find we get agitated when we start focusing on the breath. Noticing if you can be present with that discomfort. If it becomes too much, I do advise you to ease back. But if you can, just continuing to find the breath, counting those beats. Today, we're not even going to worry about doing equal parts breath or longer exhales or anything like that. I just want you to notice what number you're naturally going to on your inhales and eventually your exhales. Perfectly okay if the mind wanders away, if we get distracted. Just like anything else in our practice, we recognize the distraction. And then we try our best to come back. No judgments though. The mind is designed to process, to take in information. And so sometimes it will veer away from something repetitive. But we're just training it to become a little more focused. We're bringing it back. Just give this a few more breaths if we can. Notice if you can fill up those lungs. Notice if something can soften on the exhale. Just a few more breaths like this. Now, when we are 
ready, we can let our hands come together at the heart. And that might be palms together, it might be hands directly over the heart. As always, make it your own. And when we are ready, we could set a positive intention. So as always, we don't have to make anything big out of that intention. Maybe it's just a reminder of a word. Maybe it is a character trait that we do want to see more of, or might help us for the rest of today. And as always, if this is the only time we set that intention, the only time we repeat that word to ourselves, we're still doing good. And then when we're ready, we'll let our hands rest at our legs. Mindful the eyes could stay closed for as long as we need. And if we'd like, we'll start with our torso circles. So if we can, we'll let our torso shift to one side, a little circle out and around and towards the other side, and maybe we circle back a little bit, maybe not. Now, as we're here, I really invite you to let those hips anchor down. So with this variation, we're able to focus a little bit more on the stretch. The body's not coming along for the ride. But as always, if we prefer more of that weeble wobble, where we kind of rock a little bit on the sit bones, are welcome to do that. That's a great alternative. It just brings something different to the table. As always, one of my biggest messages I want to send with our classes is that all these variations, neither better nor worse, certainly not the advanced yoga or the fullest expression. They just bring different things to the table and we get to ask ourselves, what about those things they bring do I need? And I think that philosophy can help us even off the mat too. Now, when we're ready, we're going to go in the opposite direction. And again, we can decide we want to anchor our hips down. Do we prefer more that we will wobble today? And that's okay. Maybe today we need a little bit of a, a silly, wobbly approach. Nothing's wrong with that. Just anchoring the hips down helps us focus a little more on the stretch itself. And if we are doing that variation, can we really notice where we're feeling it in the hips or in the back? As always, observing sensation is not the same as looking for sensation. If it's not happening in the hips or in the back, it doesn't mean we're doing it wrong. It just means we're getting different sensations. So again, can we observe? What do we feel right now in the back? What do we feel right now in the hips? And then slowly but surely, we're going to bring ourselves back, back to that center position. And on our next inhale, we're going to bring our arms up and overhead. We'll take our right arm, we'll let the right hand come down next to us. That left arm can lift up, or maybe it starts to lift up and overhead. Finding the side bend of your choice. So again, neither better nor worse. We're just going to bring different things to the table. We might stay exactly where we are. Some even like to bring the hand closer to the body and really press down as the ribs lift up. Others might like to walk the hand out as we reach up and overhead. Some might like to put the elbow down, some might not. Now, maybe we're doing the elbow down, but if we are noticing if the hip came along for the ride, that first iteration my hip did, so I brought my elbow in a little bit, and that's just gonna help me focus on the stretch, focus on letting that hip anchor down. When my hip comes along for the ride, it's a little less about my back stretch. So we're gonna try our best to breathe in. We're gonna try our best to breathe out. One more breath. As we're ready, we'll come back up, we'll switch sides, opposite arm comes down, and we decide, do I want the variation where my hand stays where it is? Do I like it closer to my body? Do I reach it out? Is it out and the elbow's down? Or do my hands, does my hand stay close and the elbow comes down? Again, make that your own. Just give ourselves a moment. Finding our breath in. Finding our breath. Two more breaths here. Now when we're ready, we'll come up and both arms can relax down. We might shrug out the shoulders. We'll come into our tabletop position, make that transition your own, however you want to get there. Now we'll start first with a few cat-cow movements, a little warm up in our back, and we can always let our belly drop down, maybe the tailbone can lift up. We can round our back, let the tailbone tuck under if that feels good, and we can just repeat this movement now. And again, I want you to choose which breathing pattern works for you today. Again, that doesn't necessarily mean the easiest one. It could be one that's quite a challenge for us, but we know it serves, and so we're adding it in. 
and notice what we need today. And notice when it's tempting to think about the path of least resistance instead. Those can be pretty mutually exclusive. Sometimes what helps us out the most is also the easiest, sometimes it's not. So again, just notice where you're at today, notice what you personally need. We're just gonna wind down from this. We're gonna end on whatever it is we wanna end on. We're gonna make our way back towards our more neutral spine. We'll pause here as always if we need a moment for the wrists. Great time to shake them out. Now when we are ready, we're gonna take our left knee. We'll bring our left knee out to the side. We'll extend that left leg. We're gonna pause here. We'll let that leg hover and then we'll place the foot down. Now pausing here for a moment, noticing how things feel. If you want to try a few more leg lifts, on our next inhale, we'll lift up the leg. On the exhale, it comes down. On the inhale, lifting up the leg, noticing if the hips turn to pop up with it, and then bring it down. We're going to lift up one more time in full. We'll bring it down. We'll lift up that leg one last time, but this time we'll swing it around behind us. We'll cross it over that right leg. We'll let the foot find the ground. Now we are welcome to add in a little side bend. Maybe it feels good to let that right shoulder travel towards that right foot or that left foot. Maybe the hips are doing a little shift towards the left. We don't have to do that if we don't want to. Again, just taking a moment here. Notice how that feels. We'll find another breath in. We'll find another breath out. Now when we're ready, we'll come back to center. We'll uncross our legs. Now we might need to move a little bit side to side, maybe a little shake out for those hands. Now when we're ready, we're trying this on the opposite side. Now we can take our right knee out. Maybe we can bring the right leg out. Can we let it hover for a moment? And then we'll let that foot plant down. Just pausing here for a moment. Notice how everything feels. Now if we want, we'll try those three leg lifts. So we can inhale to lift, try our best to keep the hips level, and the exhale to bring it down. Inhale to lift, and exhale to lower. We're just doing it in full one more time. So we do a lift, and then a lower. We'll lift one more time, but now we're gonna bring the leg behind us, crossing over that left foot, letting that foot, or letting the right foot find the ground. If you're like me, do a little adjusting and then maybe you add in that side bend that left shoulder is trying to point out the that right foot maybe we're doing a little press of the hips in the opposite direction maybe not and just finding a stretch here maybe we're feeling it along that IT band that's that really big tendon that we have on the outside of our thigh maybe not Now when we're ready, we'll uncross, we'll come back, we'll shake out if we need to shake them out. We'll find our way into our child's pose for a moment. As always, whatever child's pose we need, give ourselves that time. Now as we are here, maybe we can notice our child's pose. Can we scan it? And if it's possible for us to be even 5% more comfortable in that child's pose, give yourself that permission to make that readjustment. And we'll give us another breath in. And another breath out. Now when we're ready, we'll find our way into our first down dog. So we can always come up, readjust the feet or the knees, readjust those hands as we curl the toes to shift back and up, mindful that we can always do bent knee down dog. We're welcome to have the legs relatively straight. We don't have to have our heels on the mat. I've been doing yoga for almost a decade. My heels do not meet the mat. They probably never will. So again, make that time your own. Maybe it feels good to pedal out the heels. Maybe it feels good to really press the belly in, a little activate through the core. Now we are welcome to add in the vinyasa flow of our choosing. Now mindful vinyasa just means to place in a special way, especially in this class, that is what we focus on. Now it might be the conventional one where we roll to plank, knees up, or maybe knees down. We could lower down a little bit. We could find a back bend that feels good. Then lifting up through the hips first and foremost, and then coming back to our resting pose. 
So again, make that movement on your own. Consider this like a 10 second recess. So just do any movement that will serve. So we're gonna find our breath in. We're gonna find our breath out. If we are ready, we'll find our way into our first forward fold. Maybe we're walking our feet in or walking the hands towards the feet. Again, really whatever it is we might need. Maybe it just feels good to hang heavy. Maybe the knees are bent. Maybe we want to shake the head out. Who knows? Make this time your own. We're going to try our best to breathe in. We'll try our best to breathe out. Now when we are ready, we'll come up to stand. We'll press through our feet, let our arms reach up and overhead, and eventually we'll let our hands find their way towards the heart. We'll pause here if that's possible. Can we notice our heartbeat for a moment? Notice how it feels to breathe in. Notice how it feels to breathe out. And then we'll find our way into our chair pose. So we're gonna make sure our feet are facing straight ahead, hips width are together, it's up to you. But as we shift back and down, can we make sure the knees are pointing in the same direction as those toes? And I want you to pay very close attention, especially if we're the kind whose knees tend to knock together. That just means our inside muscles are stronger than our outside muscles. That might be contributing to our IT, pain, pain, uh, IT band pain, say that three times fast. We're gonna think about those outside thigh muscles activating we're going to draw those knees out that takes a lot of extra work especially if you're like me and a little naturally knock need also say that three times fast that just means i have to focus a little harder i have to think about my knees a little bit more i have to be mindful about it it's not easy but i know it serves and we're going to try our best to breathe. I know this isn't easy. Can you stay present with this? Again, this controlled stress on the mat, so we're better with handling our stress off the mat. Deep breath in if it's possible. Deep breath out. One more breath. Now we're going to give this one last inhale, and on our exhale, we'll find our forward fold. Now this is our forward fold. We can do whatever we need. Maybe it feels good to sway a little bit. Maybe it feels good to have our hands on our elbows. Maybe we just wanna shake out the head. Again, just make this time your own. Make this what you need it to be. We're gonna try our best to breathe in. We're gonna try our best to breathe out. One more breath here. Now when we are ready, we're gonna find our way into our vinyasa flow. And now that might mean we finding our halfway lift, strong, flat back. On the exhale, we'll relax it down. The hands can go wherever we need them to. We can step back into the pose of our choosing. Maybe that's down dog. We do the movement of our choosing. So it could be our conventional flow, that roll to plank, whether it's plank pose or plank pose, and we do a little shift forward. We can lower, we can back bend. We find our way into a resting pose. But again, we don't have to lower and back bend as ambiguous as those cues are. We could do some cat cow movements. We could do those leg lifts from table. What do you need right now? Now, if we are ready, we'll play a little bit with our core. We can do this from our down dog. We can try this out from table. We can skip it entirely. If we would like, we might lift up our left leg towards the ceiling. Now, when we're ready, we'll bring that knee towards the opposite elbow. So we're gonna bring left knee across the body towards the right. Can we hold it for a moment? Can we squeeze it in a little bit more? And then we unwind nice and slow. Now we might do that again. Knee across the body towards the elbow as we come towards plank pause. Can we squeeze this in? And then nice and slow, we unwind. The hardest core work is the stuff we do slowly. One more time, nice 
and slow. Knee to opposite elbow, pause, can we squeeze it in? And then unwinding back to our down dog split. Now we'll find our way into our high lunge so we could do our knee to chest, foot towards that front or that right or left hand. We'll come up, we'll pause, we'll notice how we're feeling. And if we're ready, we'll find our high lunge. So we'll pause here for a moment if that's possible. We're gonna take that moment to breathe in and that moment to breathe out. Now if we're ready, we'll find our way into our twisting lunge. We'll bring our hands to our heart. We'll take a deep breath in. On the exhale, we're gonna twist towards the bent knee. Now we can stay upright for this pose. We can tilt forward for this pose. We're welcome to let the elbow or upper arm find the thigh. We can also place the forearm on the thigh instead. What do you need? Now we can always look downwards. That's gonna be the easiest for the inner ear. Looking to the wall is tougher. Looking to the ceiling is tougher still. Closing the eyes will almost guarantee you wobble out of the pose, but you are welcome to explore that. Again, be curious with your pose. Don't strive for perfection. Strive for what will serve. Full breath in. Full breath out. One more breath. Now, if we're ready, we'll unwind. We'll come back up if we can. Him. Now, if we are ready, we're going to take a moment and make our way into warrior one. So we might relax the arms for a moment. We're going to take our back leg in a little bit and we'll let the heel come down. Facing forward, we might find our way into our humble warrior. We'll bring our hands behind our back. We're going to get nice and tall. We're going to think those hips are staying relatively square towards the front of the mat and we'll start to tilt forward. Now, while we are here, I really want you to check in. With that left leg, do we find it pivoting out to the side so we can come down? If this is happening, I want you to draw that hip back and come down a little bit more straight on. This is gonna help activate those muscles around the IT band area. And that's going to help us with our IT band pain. The same reason we might be having our knees knock together in chair might be the reason we pivot out in our warrior one or our humble warrior. So we're going to try our best to breathe in and out. Now, when we are ready, we'll come back up. Maybe we lift the arms up one more time. Maybe not. And then we'll find our way into our tri or our pyramid pose. We're gonna relax the arms. Front leg could straighten, but we don't have to. Back leg can come in just a little bit until both feet can face straight ahead. We all know how I feel about making sure both toes point straight ahead, especially that back foot. That's gonna help get that outside calf muscle area. Make this your own. Maybe we stay tall. We do a little tilt forward. We feel that tailbone lift up. And this is as far as we go. We don't go pretty far at all. Maybe hands are lightly on our thigh. We might be someone who likes to bring the hands down to the shins or to the floor, but really make this time your own. Also notice if your hips are trying to pivot away from the stretch, can they stay relatively squared? We might even think about our left hip trying to travel to the back of the room. Again, nothing is so intense that it makes us hold our breath. Finding that line between appropriate challenge and past our means. Now we're gonna try our best to breathe in and try our best to breathe out. Now when we are ready, we're eventually all gonna come back into a forward fold. If you want to try out your standing split, maybe we bend the front knee until our hands can find blocks, our chair, maybe the floor, maybe not, and press through that front foot so much it lifts up our back leg. And just give this a moment. And for today, I really advise you to play with keeping the hips squared, noticing when that right hip wants to open up. And just for today, notice how it feels to keep them squared. And then we'll bring that leg in, maybe with both knees relatively bent. We might take a moment here, a little roll out for those wrists. We might even interlace the fingers, do little figure eights. 
And then when we're ready, we do the flow of our choosing. It can be our halfway lift and plant the hands. If we are practicing a hop back, I recommend hopping back to our down dog first and foremost, and with soft knees, press through the hands, press through the belly, lift up and back, soft knees. And then we find our down dog. Now, if we want to add in other movement, we can, and maybe our other movement right now is child's pose. Maybe our other movement right now is cat cow. Maybe our other movement right now is our conventional flow. What do we need right now? What do we want to do? And whatever we found, we'll give it three more breaths. Now, when we are ready, we might try this on the other side. We could meet in down dog if we want to do this. We can lift up our right leg towards the ceiling. And we'll do knee across the body towards that left elbow, nice and slow. But we pause, we squeeze it in as if that knee is trying to meet the ceiling. And then we unwind back to down dog split. Nice and slow, we do it again across the body, opposite elbow, pausing here if we can, a little squeezing in, and then nice and mindful, we unwind. One more time, one of the things I love about slow core movement is it gives me a chance to really notice when I want to rush through it, and now we're going to unwind and see if we can slow it down. Now when we're ready, we're going to find our way into our high lunge, so we can do our knee to chest, foot towards that right hand, we come up. We adjust the feet. Maybe the arms reach, maybe they don't. Can we take a moment? Now, if we are ready, we'll find our way into our twist. We can bring our hands to our heart. Deep breath in. On the exhale, now we're twisting towards the right side. Now we can stay upright. We can do forearm on our thigh. We can do the elbow or the upper arm on the thigh. Notice when you're putting it on the knee, just notice if you can shift it down. And that might mean widening out or lengthening out your stance. Again, notice where you wanna place your eyes. We don't have to have this pose be perfect. This isn't dance class. We don't have to worry about hitting our marks perfectly. We could close the eyes and then notice what happens? Be curious. Full breath in if we can. Full breath out. One more breath. Now when we're ready, we'll unwind, press through those feet so we can come back up. We'll find our way to warrior one for a moment. We can relax the arms if we want to. Back leg can come in a little bit until that heel can pivot down. We'll bring the arms behind our back for our humble warrior. We'll take a deep breath in. On the exhale, we tilt forward and we are holding this for a little bit of time. And as we do so, I will mention that this is one of my favorite poses, if only because it's one of the hardest for me. It is around this point in the sequence that my legs are tired. I want to be done with what I'm doing with my legs. I want to hold my breath until I can finally come out of it. And then I check in. I notice that that's where my mind went. And without any judgment, I come back to the breath. Can I hold this constructive pose for another breath in? For another breath out. Again, noticing if that right hip is pivoted, bring it back if it did. Full breath in and out. And then on our inhale, we'll come back up. We'll relax the arms, a little shrugging if we'd like to shrug the shoulders. We'll find our version of pyramid. We're welcome to straighten the front leg. We don't have to. We'll bring that back foot in and we are going to try our best to get the feet to face straight ahead. Get that outside calf muscle stretch. It's in desperate need of it. And we make this our own. Again, knee might be straight, knee might be bent. Maybe we like to stay pretty tall. And just think about the tailbone lifting. And this is it, this is our pose. We're pretty high up. Maybe we're even holding on to a table or shelves. Maybe hands are on the thighs, on the shins, on our blocks, on the floor. And we pause. Now we're gonna try our best to breathe in. We're gonna try our best to breathe out. 
Full inhale if possible. Full exhale. Again, nothing so intense we can't breathe. If it's so intense we can't breathe, that means we have activated our fight or flight response, we've activated our stretch reflex. We want to remember that our muscle range of motion is not really about the muscles themselves, but about our nervous system. These stretches are our way of telling the nervous system, hey, we can release these guys a little bit more. Now, if we want to try our standing split, we're going to bend our front knee. Hands can find blocks, whatever we need. Press through that front foot. We lift up our back leg. And again, really notice what it feels like to keep our hips level right now. Driving that left hip down. Notice how that feels. This is going to prep us for our next pose. And then when we're ready, we'll bring that leg down. Back foot forward fold, maybe bent knee at first. Maybe it feels good to relatively straighten out the legs. It's okay if we feel a little asymmetry during these uh, particular poses, especially when we just did a lot of work on one side or one side got that work sooner than the other side. Just notice how the muscles feel right now. Deep breath in if we can. Deep breath out. Now, if we are ready, we'll come up to stand. Now we can think soft knees, a press through the feet. We'll lift up and overhead. Maybe those arms can reach and we'll bring our hands to our heart. And we'll pause here if we can. Can we notice that heartbeat? Maybe our heartbeat is a little stronger than it was at the beginning of class. Maybe not. Again, when we are observing sensations, we don't want to look for sensations. Can we be curious? No predictions here, no expectations. Just noticing our heartbeat, noticing the lungs, noticing the legs. It's okay if they're tired right now. This might even be a chance to remind ourselves our body is doing the best that it can with what it has right now. Even if sometimes it feels short-sighted, even if it feels like it is not meeting our expectations, our body is trying its best with what it has right now. And we might even take a moment to just show gratitude, gratitude towards the body for trying as hard as it does. This amazingly complex network of muscles, tendons, ligaments, our joints, our bones, our nervous system. And that's not even getting into everything else, all the organs, the brain. It's, it's a little mini miracle standing on our yoga mat. And just give yourself a moment for that. Even if our body is not what we expected it to be or we don't think we're uh, where we should be, that's okay. We're just giving ourselves a little extra time and with that extra time, we're also giving ourselves just a little bit of a breather, catching the breath. And then hopefully, we can take both the rest and that gratitude for our body into our next pose. So we can play with a whole number of poses here. I can really let this be your time. We might come back to our standing split. We might play with warrior three, or we might play with our twisting half moon. Now, if you have blocks, I really recommend you get those handy. If you don't have blocks, we can also do this with uh, stable chairs, the um, four-legged chairs as opposed to the rolling variety. But if the rolling one has locked wheels, maybe that works, but I can't really uh, recommend it for safety reasons. Anything where we don't have to necessarily have our hands all the way down to the floor. Now, what we might do first is we might first and foremost make sure we have enough space for our legs behind us. And we'll find our forward fold. So maybe it just feels good to inhale the arms up and we'll exhale, maybe hands are on those blocks. Now maybe this is our pose. Now we are welcome to uh, find our standing split and maybe we start on our left side. Maybe we soften our knees 
and put weight into the left leg first and let that right leg lift. Now, we're gonna try our best to at least focus on letting the hip stay square today. There's nothing inherently wrong about opening up the hip, but for today at least, let's focus on the hip staying square. Now from here, we are welcome to play with warrior three instead, which we press through the front foot and lift the hands off of our blocks. We wanna find our twist instead. We're gonna take that left hand to our left hip. We're gonna think about that left shoulder lifting up. Now being very careful here, again, keep those eyes down first. It's gonna be the easiest for our inner ear. We are welcome to reach our arm towards the ceiling, but mindful the shoulder will take in what the shoulder, uh, torso is not able to do. If we can't reach straight for the ceiling, that's okay. Don't force it. Whatever we found here, try your best to breathe in. Try your best to breathe out. And then we'll unwind, come down, Take that moment, maybe in our forward fold still, maybe the hands come off our blocks or whatever it is we're using today. Maybe we're circling out the wrists, maybe we're moving a little side to side. And now we'll try it on the other side. Now we can place those hands on our blocks again. We might think a little lift, a little halfway lift here, strong, flat back. Now maybe now the weight is in our right leg. Soft knees if we can. We're gonna bring that left leg behind us. Now, today I really want you to focus on those hips staying square. For a lot of us, that turns the standing split into a standing upside down letter L. Let it be that. Now again, we might play with our warrior three, pressing through the foot, taking our hands off of our blocks, maybe not. Maybe we add in our twist where the right hand finds our hip. We lift that right shoulder to the ceiling. Maybe that right arm reaches as well. Maybe it doesn't. Okay, whatever we need here, try your best to breathe in. Try your best to breathe out. If you are like me, you feel this along the outside of that standing leg. But again, everyone will have a slightly different experience. Full breath in. Full breath out. And we'll mindfully come out and back to a forward fold. Then we'll take a moment here. Maybe we hang heavy, maybe we circle out the wrists. Now we'll go from our, st our standing twisted half moon into our twisting triangle, which is almost like our twisting half moon, just tilted 90 degrees. Now again, make sure you go to your level, nobody else's. Maybe we place our hands on those blocks or whatever elevating device we have. We'll put weight into our left leg first. Now keeping that uh, uh, left leg relatively straight, again, we can have it as much straight or bent as we want so long as we don't lock the knee out. We're gonna put weight into it. We'll send our right foot back and we'll let that foot pivot down. We'll let it pivot down however we want it to. We can uh, pivot inwards if we prefer. Now again, we can keep that front leg relatively straight. We are welcome to keep it bent. Make this time your own. Now if you're like me, you need to walk in your blocks. We're gonna try our best to think hips relatively squared. If they're not squared before, adding in the twist will square them off, so we wanna make sure we're doing it on our terms first. Now, when we are ready, we might take our left hand and bring it to the hip, and maybe we lift that left arm up. Maybe that arm lifts to the ceiling as well, maybe it doesn't, again, listen to the body here. The shoulder will take in what the torso can't, so if we get pinching as the arm reaches, reach for the wall instead. Reach for the corner of where the wall and the uh, ceiling meet or even go sideways or avoid it entirely. Full breath in if we can. Full breath out. One more breath. Now when we're ready, we'll unwind, we'll come back down. We'll find our way back to our forward fold so we can always soften the front knee. We'll step that back leg in. Might even take a moment, a little bend in the knees, a little straightening out of the legs. We'll try it on the other side. Now we have weight in our right leg. We'll send that left leg back, heel pivots down however we want it to. We're gonna try our best to keep those hips relatively squared. Again, make this time your own. Maybe the front knee is bent. Maybe we like it relatively straight. Just notice when it's getting locked out and see if you can soften it. Now, if we are ready, maybe we place right hand on our hip. Maybe we turn towards the ceiling. Maybe we reach towards the ceiling. Maybe not. 
Again, notice where there is constructive discomfort. That means the pose might not be easy, but we know it is serving us. For those of us who go on runs or hike, we know this feeling. It's not easy, but we know it is serving, so we do our best to stay with it. Deep breath in if we can. Deep breath out. Full breath in. Full breath out. One more breath. Now we'll unwind. We'll come back, we'll set that back leg in. Now we're welcome to hang heavy. We're welcome to roll out the wrist. We're welcome to interlace the fingers and make figure eights. Maybe we just hang. Maybe it feels good to have our hands on our elbows or our upper arms. Maybe we do a little sway. Now when we're ready, we'll find the flow of our choosing. We are welcome to find our halfway lift. We're welcome to, welcome to plant the hands, step back, do the movement that we personally need. Now we're gonna give this extra time, which might mean extra conventional flows. Another thing we could do in place of it is to do our cross-legged cat-cows, which can help out our IT band, where you put a little more weight into that. Let's start with our left side, cross right over left, readjust the hands, do a little cat-cow movement here, especially through the tilting in the hips. And if we're doing that, we might switch sides, uncross, recross, let those hands continue to travel towards the side. Same deal, a little cat-cow movement here. But again, we don't have to be doing this. We're just giving ourselves extra time to do the vinyasa flow of our choosing. We can uncross if we were doing that. Now I want you to have another, let's say three to four breaths to do whatever it is you personally need. And eventually we'll all meet in that child's pose. So again, three more breaths, do whatever will serve us here. Now, if we are ready, we'll all meet in that child's pose. We'll just take a moment, a little winding down if that's possible. Take that moment to breathe in if we can. And that moment to breathe out. Maybe one more full breath here. Now, if we are ready, we'll find our way into a seated position. And maybe that means we've come up. Maybe we swing our legs around, maybe not. Just come into it however you need to. And maybe it feels good to extend the legs first. Maybe we'll shake out, maybe we move our feet. Now, when we are ready, we'll find our way into our bound angle pose. So the knees can bend, soles of the feet are welcome to meet. We can adjust, we can place anything we need to underneath the knees or the thighs for support. And again, we decide, do I like the version where I stay upright? Do I like the version where I tilt back? Or would I prefer the version where I tilt forward? Again, pick the version you personally would like, and we're just going to settle into it if we can. Now, as we are here, we'll try our best to breathe in and try our best to breathe out. Full inhale. Full exhale. Now, can we give this three more breaths? Now, 
And when we are ready, we'll come up. Let our legs come up, let our legs straighten out. Maybe they shake out, maybe we move our feet. And we're gonna come into our upright, slightly tilted figure four pose. And we wanna go nice and slow, especially with when we add in the tilt. Now we might start by taking in our right knee. We're gonna flex that foot, we're gonna place that foot somewhere along the thigh. And this could be our pose. We're getting plenty of stretch, we don't need to go any further. Now, if we would like, we are welcome to lean back a little bit. How far back is up to you? And we'll bend our front knee until it eventually, the foot finds the ground. Now, how close that heel gets to the hips is up to us. Maybe it's super close to the hips. Maybe that heel is pretty far away. We might even just stay here. We're getting plenty of stretch. As always, we don't want to go past our limits. Going past our limits doesn't mean we suddenly achieve uh, new levels. It means we're at greater risk for injury. Now we might notice that our knee right now is essentially pointing at 12 o'clock if we had this nice vertical clock uh, in front of us. Now if we can, we're gonna take that knee and let it start to go counterclockwise. Maybe it's starting to find 12, 11, maybe 10. Most of us probably won't go any farther than 9.30, maybe 9 o'clock, but probably not. And we're really paying close attention to that right hip. Just noticing what we're feeling here. Again, nothing so intense we can't breathe over it, but it's okay if there's relative discomfort. It's okay if we feel tension in the muscles. And then we breathe. We essentially tell our nervous system, it's okay for these muscles to start to release. Deep breath in if we can. Deep breath out. One more breath. Now if we can, we'll bring that knee back to 12, we'll uncross, let the legs straighten out, we'll come up. We might need a moment for the wrists, a little circling out. We can do our wrist stretches where the hands make the letter L's that equally press into each other. Now if we find this is tough on the wrist, we are welcome to take things like very thick books that are sturdy or our blocks, bring them behind us and place our hands on the block so that the fingers drape over it. It's gonna be a little less intense on the wrist then. When we are ready, we'll try this on the other side. Now we're gonna bring in that left knee. We're gonna flex the foot. We're gonna place it on top of that thigh. Now if we want to, we can bring our hands back. We can bend the knee. We can pause here. Again, make this time your own. Maybe we wanna really bring that heel in. Maybe we wanna keep it pretty far away. And we might have to readjust when we add in the tilt. Again, what worked for us when our body is in one position is not guaranteed to work for us when the body is in the other position. But if we're ready, we'll take that knee and we'll let it start to go clockwise now. Maybe we go to one o'clock or two or maybe 2.30, maybe not any further than this. Notice when the body tries to compensate because it's thinking that our focus is on getting that knee as much to the side as possible. That's not our focus at all. Our focus is on that left hip. Maybe we're feeling some sensations around that left hip. Maybe we're stretching out what's known as our piriformis, maybe not. Maybe we continue to feel it in our IT band. Again, that nice big tendon right here along the outside of our thigh. Just gonna try our best to breathe. Deep inhale. Deep exhale. One more breath. And then we'll bring up. Maybe straighten out the leg before we uncross. We can come up. We might need to shake out the hands. We might need to roll out the hands, whatever it is we need. And then we'll come down onto our backs. So again, however we personally need to get there. Now, once we're there, we're welcome to hug the knees and rock. Now, mindful that our twists are whatever we personally need them to be. What I suggest is exactly that suggestion. We might do what is essentially the supine version of our uh, twisted half moon, or another way of looking at it is the supine version of our twisted hand to big toe pose, if we are familiar with that. But again, we don't have to do this. Now, if we want to, we might let that right leg stay straight along the length of our mat. 
We might be someone, myself included, who likes to shift the hips to the left first. And we might start first with keeping that left knee bent and we twist over towards the right side. And notice how that feels. This might be our pose. We might make sure one of those blocks or books or something that can elevate our, is handy. Now, if it feels good, we might extend that left leg out. Now, you see, it might be out of camera, but I placed my foot on that block because I know it's not comfortable for me to put my foot all the way down. Now, if we have the space for it, we're welcome to hold on to the foot. If we don't have that space, don't worry about it. This is not the goal here. We're just kind of playing around, making the twist our own. Again, notice what we need. Full breath in. Full breath out. Try our best to give us three more breaths. Now, if we are ready, we can re bend the knee, we can come back up. Maybe we need a moment once we get back to center. Maybe we like to move the knees around a little bit. Now we'll try it on the other side. So again, we might make sure our block is handy for us. We can let our left leg now straighten out along the length of our mat. We can shift our hips towards the right. We'll twist with the knee bent first. Notice how that personally feels. We might even be taking that block, placing it underneath this knee. Now if we feel like we want, we want to go further, we can always straighten that leg out. Maybe we're placing that block on the knee. So again, it might be hand to big toe pose where we have our hand on the foot. It could also be hand on the calf muscle area. It could be hands free, whatever you need. And we breathe. We're gonna try our best to inhale. We're gonna try our best to exhale. Just a few more breaths. Now, if we are ready, we can let go, rebend the knee, come back to center, readjust the hips, move in whatever way we personally need to move. And then today might be a day that we find supine bound angle, where those feet come together, knees are out to the side, and we might take whatever we have for elevating devices and place them underneath our thighs, like door jams, or place them underneath the knees. Blankets work here, stacking them up. Pillows work here, especially if we find this is a little tough for our joints to keep those knees where they are. Great alternative. And then we just come back to whatever it is we might need. Now we can remind ourselves that what we need and what is easy, two separate terms. Sometimes they overlap, sometimes they don't okay if we're in this pose and we're not feeling the most serene in the world that's okay then we just ask ourselves what would help me what do I need right now can I find those deep breaths does counting as I breathe help now as we do so I will let you know that this is the last minute of our physical practice before we have our Shavasana. This is our chance to do whatever it is we need, which might mean coming out of the pose and into whatever resting posture feels good. It might be a chance to add in any additional poses that we know helps our practice feel uh, well-rounded, or maybe it helps wind us down a little better. And again, Shavasana in this class is relatively short. So if we would prefer to pause the video and set a timer on our phone, I truly advise that. Give yourself that time. Shavasana is one of the most important poses we do. And in a lot of ways, what we're doing on the mat in the lead up to Shavasana is a way to prepare us to enjoy this pose to the best of our abilities. So again, really make this time your own. It's okay if Shavasana is not easy for us or it's not easy for us at the moment. Notice that. 
be present with that. So the same way we're practicing being uh, present with that physical discomfort, we're trying to do the same for the mind as well. Can we breathe? Can we stay present? And again, make that time your own. I'll play the singing bowls for a few minutes. I'll let them fade into silence. And what we do between now and then is entirely within our power. start with our breath in and with our breath out we can return movement as movement feels right so maybe it feels good right now just to stretch out through the limbs sometimes it's nice to imagine ourselves waking up in the most comfortable bed maybe in a place that brings us a lot of serenity a lot of calmness beachfront vacation place, whatever it is. Just that slow waking up, stretching out the limbs, leisurely bringing ourselves back towards that easy seat. And again, if we find the urge to jump out of our shavasana and into seated pose, notice if we can delay that by just even one breath. And once we are in our easy seat, and no rush, we get there as we get there. We'll let our hands come together at the heart. We'll pause for that moment of gratitude, and perhaps today we continue to thank now ourselves for taking that time to practice, 
even if it was difficult, even if we got distracted or disheartened, we're staying present on the mat. And then whatever meaning of namaste resonates today, and perhaps today it is the courage within me recognizes the courage within you, I thank you for your time, and I thank you for your practice. Namaste.